gentlemen, and welcome to Upper St. Clair High School, where we have a fantastic and entertaining match for you this evening between the Upper St. Clair Panthers and the Bethel Park Hawks. I'm Brett Davis, and I'm here with Gavin Williams. Say hello, Gavin. I'm great to be back. Great to be back, Coach Davis. I'll tell you what, when uh, when you come back and you get to see a rivalry game such as this one, throw the section stuff out the window. It is a non-section game. Don't let that fool you, ladies and gentlemen. This is always a big rivalry game. It's always one of the more important games on the regular season schedule, and I look at to be just that this evening. Yeah, we can look at this game, and this may actually be, could be, a preview of a Whippeal final. You've got the Upper St. Clair Panthers coming in with a record of 3-0, and and you have the Bethel Park Hawks coming in with a record of 5-0. and This was a rather intriguing matchup last year, if you remember correctly. It really was. These teams were, uh, and Upper St. Clair got the better of them when it mattered, but uh, the teams were evenly matched, and both teams had a lot of underclassmen, and, and that's what you see then the year after that. You see a very, very strong opponent. Absolutely, and uh, just to run down the schedules, uh, Bethel Park is in Section 4, conference record of 2-0. and Overall, they're actually 6-0. and Started out the season with a win over Beaver, Beaver Area, 5-0, then defeated South Fayette, 2-0. Beat Trinity 3-0, close one against Norwin 3-2, and uh, well, like this, they actually defeated Peters Township 2-1, their most recent game coming earlier in the week where they defeated McKeesport 11-0. So they are coming in on a high with about 26 goals for and only three goals against at this point in time. So this, this team comes in with a tremendous record and uh, just ready to play. Yes, let's set the scene for you. We have the visiting Hawks in their orange uniforms going from left to right on your screen. This is the Panthers in their home whites in go going from right to left. And it is a gorgeous Saturday night. It's a perfect night for soccer. It is not too hot. Kids can probably run forever in this sort of temperature. I, I really loved playing in this type of temperature. And you have the first opportunity here, uh, a dangerous one, at about the 25-yard line of the football field. We have a set piece, and this will be number four, senior captain Wes Burdett. Yeah, we'll see what Wes can do, and after this, we'll get the lineup uh, set up for you. Back, uh, header off of, uh, looks like, Ethan Dysert. Hawks trying to clear the ball. Ethan doing a nice job getting to it. Ball's going to go out either for a goal kick or a throw, and I'm not sure. Probably looks like a throw at this point. So in the goal, we've got Joe Conlon, who made some tremendous saves against Cannon Mack. Uh, Hayden Barnhart in the back, Wes Berdetta we mentioned earlier in the back, and uh, Garrett Blake, defensive midfielders, look like we've got uh, Kevin Muck, um, and also I believe probably on right back is going to be Jonathan Erdman. Uh, with Kevin in the middle is uh, Troy Kiernan. Uh, out left we've got uh, John Kurtunka. Uh, Robbie Mertz is probably playing that attacking midfield position for you. Um, and we've got Joel uh, Hart up top and uh, Ethan Dysodite outside, a little bit of a change for the Panthers at this, uh, at this point in time. Well, this is Garrett Blake, the sophomore, left outside defender, trying to play a through ball to Joe, Joel Hart. Uh, couldn't quite get it there, and the Hawks looking to counter. Mertz pressures, but Bethel switches fields nicely. Ooh, a hard tackle by Erdman, and he looks like he got ball. And yeah, that's going to, yeah, nice, very nice. Yeah, that's, I was going to say, I think that's a, a Panther free kick. Uh, Jonathan came in with a hard tackle and looked like he got ball. Here comes a quick restart. Yep. And he looks like he hurt his wrist a little bit there. Hopefully he can just shake that off and, uh, and move on. But uh, he came in hard on uh, T.J. Gallagher, that I believe, is playing that outside uh, uh, position for the uh, for the hall. Actually, it's not T.J., it's a different player. T.J. sitting in the central uh, central midfield area. So we're seeing a lot of activity from Jonathan Erdman down the right side early. That's a good sign for the Panthers. The one thing the Panthers do do, they love to get their defensemen on the flanks into the attack. It's been a, you know, a hallmark of Panther soccer for the last couple of years. Yeah, and that's one of the benefits of playing with the four flat in the back. You know, it's designed to get your flank players up in the uh, offensive uh, part of the game for you. Nice little footwork from Rob Mertz. Touches it outside. This is Dicer to Hart. Hart's going to try to turn the corner. He will do so. Very nice from Joel Hart. He's coming in. Uh, not no Really no support. No, not at all. And, you know, one of the things we talked about, uh, Gavin, at the last game uh, was to what degree is Joel going to mentally decide that he's going to put his print, his imprint on each game. Because there's no question he can do it technically. It's whether or not he's going to mentally uh, take it to his opponents. And uh, right there, that's an ex excellent sight, seeing him taking some people on 1v1. Uh, he's going to win most of those battles. It's nice to see him being aggressive here early in the game. 
Well, there, there you saw the first example of what you're going to see a lot this season. Tonight and uh, every other game, the long throws of Garrett Blake. He went all the way over to the right side, threw that way back across the box, and it was a pretty good head attempt from Troy Kiernan there uh, and just wide of the goal for a goal kick. Yeah, there's a lot of – we've got a lot of tall kids on the team this year, okay, a lot of kids that are good – uh, good in the air. So I would think most of the teams that we're playing against, we should have that aerial advantage, you know, through the run of the game. Uh, both Wes and, uh, and Garrett uh, can get the ball into the box uh, from distance. And, you know, it's, it's a luxury we have that most teams don't. And it's a huge luxury on both sides of the ball. It's a luxury on defensive set pieces and offensive set pieces. And, uh, you know, I mean, let, let's not kid ourselves here. Yes, a lot of goals are scored in the run of play, but a lot of goals are scored on corner kicks and set pieces, and uh, the Panthers do have some advantages there physically. About 35 minutes left here in the first half, and uh, St. Clair kind of controlling the game. I don't think Bethel's really had any possession in, uh, in our half, and this is probably their first soiree in. Now you always wonder at times how good the Bethel Park teams are because they do play in a in a section where they get some pretty easy games well, <laughs> every so often. Well, that McKeesport that McKeesport <laughs> score sort of sticks out at you. Yeah, and you know, so they'll they'll beat teams 11 nothing, 12 nothing, 8 nothing. Where historically, you know, we've not have that. Uh, that night off, if you if you will, with some realignment this year, you know we'll get a couple couple of those games, and uh, you know good or bad for the squads, um, I think it's good. You know we have a huge roster this year, and and those are the types of games, quite frankly, where you take the starters, you sit them down at the end of the first half, and you let the uh, uh, your second team come in and uh, finish the game out. Big throw in and huge up by uh, Quentin Keebler for Bethel Park. Strong hands there. Very impressive. Caught Strong it at the top of his jump junior. and got up very nicely. Now Quentin will be taking his trade over to uh, Century United next year as a U-17 player. Been with Century since he was a uh, U-13 player. He's got some athleticism, I'll tell you what. That was, I mean, he was way up there. Yeah, Q's one of those kids. He plays he plays baseball, he plays basketball, and he plays soccer. I'm not sure if he's going to fully commit to soccer at this point in time, but uh, having been his coach for a number of years. Yeah. I, yeah. I know where you're leaning. I would always, always wish, particularly as he got older, that he would commit to soccer 100%. He was, uh, found himself sliding into second a while back and broke his leg, which was... Uh, Obviously a lot harder on him than for me, but <laughs> nonetheless. Good idea, a little give and go there from uh, John Gatunka and, and Rob Mertz not quite hooking up, and uh, it will be a hawk throw. Yeah, Kevin Muck must have uh, taken a shot in the jaw here early in the game because uh, he continues to go to his jaw with his hands, so hopefully uh, that's nothing serious and he can just shake that off here as he moves forward. Probably is not going to curb Gavin Muck's aggression because uh, I've been watching him for a while now and almost nothing curbs his aggression. Uh-oh, this is a bad giveaway. It's touch back. Panthers are collapsing on him. Touches back, and oh boy, I'll tell you what, that was a scary opportunity that didn't really amount to a great chance for Bethel. Yeah, Kevin just, um, I, Kevin just got caught. Okay, it's a giveaway, that's all. Unfortunately, it's a bad place for a giveaway. Thankfully, uh, when the ball found Guerrero's feet, he wasn't able, it was a forward for Bethel Park, he wasn't able to collect himself quick enough to, uh, to get the shot off, but uh, you know, these kids 18, 20 yards out in the middle of the net, uh, normally you're gonna, you're gonna pay, you're gonna pay. You can hear the coaches imploring the, uh, the players to keep the ball moving, that they're just sitting on it too long. That'll go out for a uh, Panther throw in. Time to restore a little possession here. As we know, the Panthers uh, over the past couple of years have tended to do default to possession when things start to get a little bit hairy. They try to possess, especially in the midfield, short passes, and uh, you know their best defense is a good offense, so to speak. Yeah, we talked about that before we, you know, before we got on air, and um, you know, there, there's nothing wrong with with the possession game. Obviously, St. Clair has a luxury of having the technical ability and its players to be able to to do that to tactically be able to do that. You know, the problem that you run into from time to time is you find yourself losing games one nothing or 2-1 or because you're just really not tactically set to put four, five, six goals 
uh, on the uh, on the board. And you know we saw uh, last Tuesday, and there's a great turn by uh, Ethan Dysert in the box. Boy, that was a little unlucky for St. Clair. Very dangerous from Burdett, who had pushed up, t turned around and touched it nicely to Dysart, who had a good solid turn, just couldn't get one off. Dysart, really nice effort there to check back, a little good back pressure to uh, you know win the ball back for the Panthers. Yeah, absolutely. Great hustle. So we're talking, you know, from a Canada Mac standpoint, we're a team that didn't have a lot of possession in the game the other night, but... Uh, you know, wound up just losing by a goal to St. Clair and, and really had opportunities to uh, to win that game. I think uh, I, had, I had talked with uh, Rob Mertz, you know, who was with me that evening, kind of putting together a blueprint on uh, how to beat the, uh, beat the Panthers. Well, I mean, the one thing you always have to balance in soccer, and I think it's a tough balance, is when do you play direct? And when do you try to possess? I think there's a component to the game where you want to possess the ball, try to make the other team chase and wear them down. But there is certainly a part of the game of soccer where you've got to go direct and be a little more assertive in your attack. Yeah, no, no question. Early on here, St. Clair's kind of having, having their way. They're having the possession. Troy Kiernan stripped there by uh, Sean Gallagher. Ball's in the corner to Mike Guerrero. See what he can do here. And Joe collect that easily. Good marking by Hayden. No real concern no there. Threat. Yeah, no threat there. That's good defense. <laughs> You're making a play predictable and uh, forcing an error there. Same thing. Yeah, same thing. Just got to get the ball. And, you know, one, one, of, the, one of the things, and, and, and we talked about this too, is at times, you know, you feel superior to your opponent. You feel superior to the guy that's across the way from you. It kind of lulls you into a little bit of a sleep, okay? And you kind of lose that sense of urgency. And the fact of the matter is, the guy across the line for you is pretty darn good, okay? So if you give him an inch here or an inch there, he's going to make you pay. And obviously, the coaching staff has seen enough. Uh, Doug Hateman is, uh, is up, and uh, I suspect the change is going to be forthcoming here with uh, just under 29 minutes left in the uh, in the first half I can't believe that throw by the way is was not declared I, they are really lax on that in my day there's no way a ball spinning like that would not have been whistled yeah it has uh, it has changed you know the rule has I tell you what I don't know if the rule has changed it's a matter of interpretation yeah and, and that's allowed okay? that's what happens because, in every sport now because yeah, the rules are the rules are pretty consistent it's it's who's making the call now this is nice, this is a good counter here. Mertz outside to Dysart, good crossover. He's looking middle, has Rob coming on, couldn't quite link up with him. Yeah, one of the things we had trouble with in the Canamac game was we made too many passes to the other team. Okay, just way too many passes to the other team. So I'm hoping that we can kind of get that corrected uh, as we move through the, uh, through the season. Now, give Canamac credit, put a lot of pressure on us, okay, which kind of put us into those errors where they were uh, unforced errors or, or forced errors, but just way too many passes uh, going to the other team uh, uh, last, uh, last game. Guerrero trying to control, puts the ball outside, and that's going to go outside for a Panther throw in. Robbie finding space, Garrett Blake over the top to him. Well done. That's just incredible. And that's going to be a uh, St. Clair. No, they said it was off, Rob. Uh, oh, wow, okay. He's not complaining. Yeah, no, you're right. Players will usually tell you what the right call should be. <laughs> Actually, with Worthy gone, now they will. <laughs> <laughs> he never met a call he thought was right if it went against him. Yeah, again, a little casual in the back right just, now. Yeah, just just a little casual, just, you know, lack of urgency at times, and, you know, you get stuck every now and then. It happens. Ball sent deep into uh, Quentin Keebler, and he'll collect that, and the uh, Hawks will get settled, and this ball will be coming out with a punt. Patrick Miller also up for the Panthers. Robbie, Robbie. nice job controlling the ball. 
just behind Joel. Right idea, trying to play a direct little through ball. The Bethel defender did a good job with it. Turned about fair play. Yeah, good read by A. Yeah, great read by Wes, actually. Yeah, good anticipation. He saw that coming, stepped up and took it away. You know, Bethel playing with the one forward up top as, uh, as St. Clair is. Yeah, this game's got a bit of a feeling out process right now. Yeah, no ne question. Neither team's yeah. committing numbers no forward question. at all. No question. I mean, there's about 25 minutes left here in the first half, and it's been uh, it's been choppy at best. You know, St. Clair's had more of the possession, but nothing uh, nothing terribly threatening. Oh, boy. Muck sort of mistimed that and flicked it back towards his own keep. Here's a little give-and-go opportunity. And Troy Kiernan up to the task, played out of bounds. It will be a hawk throw here, about the 20-yard line here of the uh, football field in Panther territory. See what kind of throw in this boy's got. Not bad. Not bad. Guerrero with a nice job shielding. Balls across, well handled, and a quick Ooh. shot. Yeah, nice job. Very clever. Nice job by Bethel. Oh, they're going to say it was deflected. They're going to say uh, hit off somebody's toe. Yeah. It's a long toe. Yeah. I, I sort of thought by the spin of the ball it just was a miss hit. They're saying it was a deflect. I can't tell from here, obviously. So the first quarter of the game for the Hawks. We'll see what they run here. Got a player on Joe. Provide a little bit of interference. A strategy which I like. Yeah, we talked a lot about that last year. And there's a hit by Mike O off of Troy Kiernan. Guerrero just sitting back waiting for the garbage. Settles the ball. First time hit on a... Half volley situation, and uh, it's off of St. Clair for another uh, Bethel Park uh, corner kick. Yeah, Troy just, you know, just barely missed the ball, essentially. He was the only one going up to contest. Yeah, just could, didn't get enough on it to clear it. Second corner kick here by, uh, by the Hawks. Ball's into the box. Yeah, that's, that is the correct call. It's going to be an offsides call, right? Oh, no, I thought, thought, he, said, I thought, thought, I thought he said it hit okay. the bar. Oh, I thought he said it hit the kick. football okay. bar. Yeah, fair enough. I thought a couple of the guys were offsides also. But it wouldn't surprise one me. before the other, yeah. Muck with the ball. Ooh, that looked like he handled it, but Troy Kiernan, nice uh, back pressure again. Here, boys. Find a gap, Kevin. Make yourself available for the ball. Garrett's got to get his head up here. Ah, yep. Well, and coach is yelling for a square ball there. Kevin Muck's wide open in the middle of the field, and Robbie just wasn't thinking that way. Well, Robbie's got such great vision that I think sometimes he tries to hit a home run with every pass as well, opposed you know, to you know make singles. Yeah, no question, no question. John's been here. He'll cut that defender off. Oh, he uh, tried to meg him. Yeah, kind of would have liked to see him just put that ball to the uh, to the right of the defender on the outside and put that ball through. Joel would have been lurking on a diagonal. We would have been in good shape there. Troy's done a nice job so far of kind of coming back, dispossessing uh, counterattacks and gaining the ball back for the Panthers. Troy Kiernan has actually been invited to be part of the Region 1 interregional pools through the Olympic Development Program to play down in Birmingham, Alabama come later this year. That's so a terrific that honor. Perspective, you got guys from all the way from Maine down to Virginia out to um, Maryland and Pennsylvania, and they probably only have maybe 18 to 20 kids that are traveling on that roster. So he is representing Region 1. There's four regions in the country, and he'll be down in Birmingham uh, playing on that team. So great honor for, uh, for him and great notoriety for, for him, obviously, and also for uh, Upper St. Clair and, and uh, Western Pennsylvania and Upper St. Clair. That's incredibly impressive. I didn't know that. Yeah, just uh, just found out. I think uh, today. Was it something? Yesterday some, or today? Was, oh, well, no wonder. <laughs> yeah, was just, it was it something uh, in one of the showcases for his club team or? No, it was part of the uh, ID process uh, that he participated in. Uh, I believe in uh, used they used to have in Ryder, New Jersey area. Okay, where they invite certain kids uh, to train there. Um, then they'll bring a bunch of kids back and just continue to whittle down. Yeah. Uh, the group and. Um, you know, out of thousands of kids, let's say, you know, in that region that are playing soccer, he's one of 18 or 20 
that will uh, participate and represent Region 1 in the interregionals uh, in Birmingham, Alabama later this year. Yeah, I know we had uh, a lot of kids do really, really well with our club teams this offseason. Uh, one of the more successful years we had, uh, I know Hayden and Garrett's team did really well. Yep. Uh, Wes's team won nationals. Well, well, when they, they won the regional, and was they were one of four teams that went to uh, nationals this year, okay, in the age group, in the U17 age group, uh, Wes's club team. So, uh, yeah, some definitely some good soccer being played at the club level uh, in Western PA at this point in time. John Erdman just lost his balance a little bit. So about 20 minutes left here in the uh, in the first half. Yeah, momentum has shifted a little bit. Uh, the Hawks have possessed the ball and been in Panther territory here for most of about the last five minutes. Ball driven in. Karen in again. Joe's going to go up for this. Punches it away. Good definitive play from Joe Conlon uh, coming out with the punch. Unfortunately, not out and back through to the, they're looking for a through ball. Nice job by West to interrupt. Yeah, oh Kevin, boy. Uh, yeah, Kev, Kevin just struggled a little bit. I mean, there's there's no other way to say it. Um, I don't know if he's just timing's timing's off a little bit or if he's um, dinged up a little bit, but. Uh, you know, he's just, he's, he's struggled a little bit so far this year. And he, he had a coming out party last year. Uh, so there's no question that he can play uh, at a top level. Absolutely. But he yeah, was terrific he's last year. a little bit right now. That's all. And he's, uh, he's very important for this team because he's absolutely. such a terrific ball winner. Oh, well, last year, there wasn't a ball he lost. Okay. Joe Hart running hard. But there, there wasn't a ball he lost last year. I mean, you talk about dominating, dominating the midfield. So we got some first substitutes of the game. Dom Caruso in, Doug Hateman in, Patrick Miller in, John Kurtunka out, Kevin Muck out, and uh, Ethan Dysert out. So Patrick Miller seen a lot of time this year. Doug Hateman seen a lot. Uh, Dom's not seen a lot, but uh, good to see him in here at the first uh, first change. I think that's off Bethel Park. They knew it was, so he hit the corner flag, and it's a throw. Throw, yeah. throw in, clear throwing, and uh, got to get the uh, get the big guys up because uh, we know what's coming next. Very rarely are there teams where you'd rather have a throw than a corner in this situation. But frankly, I think he can control his throws Absolutely. better. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, nice little flick by the Bethel Park defender because you had Troy Kiernan coming on, and he had a beat on that. It's going to be another St. Clair throw in. Looks like Wes will take this one, and Wes is just as good a throw, and it'll just be coming in from the other side. Yeah, Garrett's exhausted. <laughs> oh, this is clever. Erdman's got all the room he wants. And there's a ball over top. Oh, beautiful from Rob. And Very nice. Holy smokes. Dom Caruso, Johnny on the spot. Talk about instant offense. <laughs> so that's when the coach sits back and just says, well, I knew it was runner play. Dom Caruso's going to play. And that's where Dom Caruso says, Coach, I need more playing time. <laughs> <laughs> Couple things to talk about. Uh, the, fir the first thing is West Burdett with a really clever play. Everybody had really committed into the box to uh, try to stop the long throw in, which is you know how you defend St. Clair off. And he went short to Jonathan Erdman. Now. Jonathan, whether he did it consciously or not, played a ball that seemed to be too long. Robbie Mertz made just a beautiful little head on the turn. Yeah, absolutely. And, and after that, I can't remember who had the next touch, but uh, I think it was Joel Hart. Yeah, it kind of it went off. I think it went off Joel and over Dom Caruso. Caruso from Hart. So uh, I think probably the first goal from uh, from Dom this year. But yeah, I think uh, you know Joel was parked out in front of the net and. Um, not sure if he intended for that ball to go to uh, Dom, but we're going to say he did. <laughs> I, I love a beautiful layoff, and uh, Caruso made no, uh, no, there was no doubt about it. Everybody's first instinct when you get in a position like Rob was in, um, you know, when you get in that position that Rob was in, is to head it towards the goal, and it's so, it's typical of Rob because he he is like a point guard out there, but. You know, that's what, exactly what you want to do. Play it back into the box. When you're, when you're on the end line, you play the ball back into the box. I mean, that, that is the rule of thumb, okay? But it's getting 
players of this age to do that. But, you know, as you, as you mature and you, you understand the game better, when you're close to the end line, you're getting, that bo you're getting that ball back in the box for one of your teammates. And that's exactly what Robbie did. Yeah, Carlos Bocanegra from the national team, who's, you know, a central defender, is just a master at that on set pieces. So the Panthers strike first. That, yep. that, that's great news. we got 16 and a half left, and it looks like uh, we've got Shane some... Sibley going in for Robbie Mertz. He's got a lot of room here. Plays to Hart. Hart with a little back heel to himself. He's looking to turn. Yeah, and that's one of the things you're going to see Joel doing all year long. He loves cutting in, okay, setting himself on that left-hand side and cutting in and uh, taking that right-footed shot. And the one thing we learned about Joel Hart on numerous occasions last year is he can strike a soccer ball. No question. Yeah, no question. So about 15 minutes left here in the first half. Quentin Ke Keebler setting the ball up. It's a goal kick. Bethel Park coming out. one nothing Upper St. Clair off of a lovely, lovely goal by Dominic Caruso. And speak of the devil, Crusoe's going to win a throw-in for the Panthers up that right sideline. I'm hoping that'll settle down Upper St. Clair. I thought they've been just sort of, whether it's, it's yeah, whether it's lackadaisical yeah. or, 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 you know, just a bit edgy, it's been, you know, yep. not, not your typical St. Clair possession. Ethan Dysert in, Joel Hart out. Looking like they're going to set up a little switch fields here. This is Bernhardt. Hayden trying to, couldn't quite connect there. I think he and Miller had a little uh, disconnect. Ooh, Garrett, yep, he's a little uh, little too lackadaisical there. Beth Park player doing a nice job in. Wes will handle this. And that can't feel good. But Hawk shakes it off, back on its feet. Yeah, he drilled that too. Doug Hapman introducing himself to the game. Yeah, he banged him there. Off Kiernan's shoulder. Yeah, he missed it again on the head. Troy's been really, really active. His timing on his jumps hasn't been great so far. West going long, probably wise. They've been back there a little, little while Getting now. Get it out of our half, yeah. This is going to fall nicely to Hateman. Nice ball, second yeah. ball. And a Keebler. So right now, Urban, Burdett, Blake, and uh, Bernhardt in the back. Hateman and Kiernan as uh, holding mids. Caruso out on the right. Patrick Miller playing that attacking mid. Shane Sibley out on the left. And uh, Ethan Dysert up top. I can't imagine Steady anybody. Joe Conlon I protecting the pipes. I can't imagine anybody has the size we have on the back line. <laughs> it, it's a really tall group back there. We've, we've got size. We've got probably hard pressed to see another starting 11 with the technical ability that we have. Yeah, no question. And we've got real high expectations. Sounds Game at a time. Sounds like we we'll should based happens. on what you just said. <laughs> Game at a time. We'll see what happens. I don't okay. profess to be a soccer coach here, but uh, you know, it seems like it makes sense. Well, those things help. <laughs> oh, this is a beautiful little move by Kiernan. Oh, boy, he just hit the outside foot of the defender there it was a beautiful move. Nice step Urban by Urban. Urban steps up well. But uh, coming up on 12 and a half minutes left here in the first half. Still one nothing Upper St. Clair. The game settled in. Upper St. Clair has definitely established some dominance here. Yeah, and it's good to see. I, you know, sometimes a goal can do one of two things. That you either sort of take the foot off the gas and say finally, or you get confident. You relax a little bit and get into the game. And I think it's been the, uh, the latter for the Panthers. Yep. Doug Hateman, nice touch over. Nice. James Sibley going through. In the corner, Ethan Dyson. See what Dice can do here. Taking a boy to the end line, and that's going to be a corner for Upper St. Clair. Boy, two nice things there. First of all, Shane Sibley with a beautiful little step-around move. Uh, I mean, he beat him clean, and you don't usually see a guy beat that cleanly. And then uh, Ethan Dyson with those wheels turned the corner and drew a corner. Yep. So uh, Caruso out. Joel Hart in. 
Dobbs should get some love here for uh, putting the Panthers up one nothing. And it'll go out for a uh, St. Clair throw in. Short throw. Dicer. And typically, I am not a fan, anyone that has listened to these uh, broadcasts, I am not a fan of short throw. Me either. Okay. But it does happen. And since we scored on it the first time, it's hard to say anything about it. But exactly. frankly, that one, there was nobody within 70 yards. <laughs> Patrick Miller on the ball here. Back to uh, Troy Kiernan. Should put this over to Doug Hateman and not even think about. Well, and once again, that becomes a speed of play issue there. Troy's got three guys on him. That ball should immediately move over. And uh, we should advance accordingly. Patrick Miller with the ball. A little heavy touch, and the ball's out. Doug Hateman, fortunate with the touch there. Fell right to Garrett Blake. That's got to be a penalty. I would say that's a foul. Yeah, you don't like to see the stuff when the guy's already in the air. That's the dangerous uh, yeah. where guys get hurt. Doug Heyman took about 10 extra yards. Yeah. We'll reset and start it up. And this will be Burdett triggering it back in in the lime green boots. Yep. It's like Kevin Muck and uh, ready to go back in. Tony Pizzone about to see the first uh, action of the day. Ten minutes left in the first half. And we're going to get an offsides call there. Ethan Dysert was creeping up and uh, got caught. And the Hawks now will have their own free kick in their own end here. Good job by Troy to win it with his foot, but not quite clear. Yeah, Hayden providing some good cover, and that's exactly what you're supposed to do. You know, provide yeah. cover. He's had a nice first half. He really has. Solid. I mean, solid. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's what you're looking for back there. You don't need him to be flashy. You just need to, him to be solid and not to make mistakes. Troy Keenan off, Shane Sibley off, Kevin Muck in, and Tony Pizzone to see his first action of the night with 9.17 left in the first half. There we go, good Tony. step. Yeah, Anthony Pizzone welcome in, welcoming into the game, disrupting a nice little Bethel uh, bout of possession. Yeah, and Coach Snyder imploring his backs to step up. And uh, Tony did exactly that. Garrett's going to try to get a long throw here before they can get in and, and uh, you know sort of match up. Eight and a half left in the first half, still one nothing up for St. Clair. Jonathan Urban on the ball. And that'll go out for a uh, St. Clair throw in. Good stick by Doug Hateman. Dispossessed. Ball back to Garrett Blake and back to Joe Collin. He should just handle this and take a look and survey and see what he has. Nice ball to Kevin Muck. That's the kind of stuff, you know, that uh, we've got to we've got to correct, obviously. Good job again by Hayden, stepping up strong and stout on that back line. Touching wide. Ooh, yep. I thought he was going to flick that by him. I guess that just from our angle, you couldn't really tell it was yeah, well yeah, above. Just a little over. Yeah, just just over his head. You know, Doug Hateman on the ball. Hayden Barnhart with his head up. West directing traffic. I'm not in love with uh, that playing a square uh, ball that I, deep. <laughs> again, confidence is good to have but you can't be blinded by it. Muck with the ball at his feet. 
Joe Collin calls for the ball. Yeah, the Panthers right now, it's, it's, whether it's a combination of being disorganized or it's just being a little careless with the ball, way too many turnovers in their own end. Nice little ball from Blake. Yeah. That's a good little one-touch, yep. too. Patrick Miller. Oh, I like what Patrick Miller that. has shown us so far. Well, there's, oh, well done, well done to beat Kevin Muck. Hopefully that ball will go out, shield it. Dyson shoots that ball, and it's going to be a uh, St. Clair throw-in. Yeah, it was a clever little play by Bethel in the midfield, but it didn't really amount to anything uh, on a Troy counter. Kiernan. He calls for Dougie Hateman. Doug's out, Troy Kiernan in. We got six minutes to go here in the first half. The Upper St. Clair Panthers struck first. Lead one nothing. Yeah, and they really do have control of, of the game. But but again, it's it's these little uh, soft passes, these hospital balls, maybe a lack of urgency, a lack of concentration at times to play, you know, the way we can play that you worry about. Well, you I, I mean, there's you, been a lot of unforced errors through the first half that you're thinking, what? You don't need, you don't need, I mean, they don't need your help. You know, it, right. it, 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 it it's one of those situations where, uh, you know, the, the number one way you can lose as a really, really excellent team like Upper St. Clair has is to beat yourself. Yep. Tayden Barnhart, Michael Guerrero are working hard. Troy Kiernan with the ball. Puts the ball outside. He's got guys all over him. Sends it long for Joel Hart. Just going to be outside. It was a good idea. Away. Yeah, and he was looking, you know, as he, as he was running out, he was looking for Joel to make that run. But... Yeah, just on the same page and optimistic. Yeah, and I don't mind that. I mean, it's a 40, 40, 50 yard ball, you know, over, over top. Op optimistic, but hey, every now and then you take a shot. Sure, you throw one in every once in a while. Yeah. Nice, nice job. There yeah, we go nice from step Kevin. By Kevin. Nice step. Just give it, to, give the ball to him. Nice touch from Dysert. Pizone wins through and almost wins that. Yep. Oh, very nice here. Well Muck again. Muck. Pizone's going to be through. Yeah, he was offidesides, he unfortunately. Was off, he I had to hold yeah, up his Tony, run. Yeah, Tony Pizone didn't recognize it. Muck did, and um, yeah, nothing, nothing you can do there. Now, this is what we want to see. Kevin Muck, this is what he does best. He wins balls and, go, and pushes forward that way. I think uh, you know some of the stuff where he's been holding the ball in the back, he's not looked as confident. But going forward and winning 50-50 balls, he is as good as there is, and that's what right. you like to see from him. Yeah, a huge part of our uh, of our success last year. So you, obviously we, we'd like and expect him expect him to get back to the level uh, at, uh, sooner rather than later. Oh, for sure. You know, well done by Wes. I mean, he handled the ball well, got it out of trouble. Um, just scares coach, me, just man. Gives you a, <laughs> Just gives you a little bit of heartburn. There's no other way to say it. Just no other way to say it. I'd say it gives the casual fan like myself even more heartburn. <laughs> I can't. So about uh, three and a half minutes left here in the first half. Still one nothing up for St. Clair. And, you know, really, we're doing a nice job controlling the game. Um, their best opportunities has been when we've maybe gone a little asleep mentally at times. T.J. Gallagher with a good win there for the uh, for the Hawks. You can see the Hawks are trying to play direct. They're trying, but uh, the Panthers have good numbers behind the ball. Yep. They, they, that that you much, can say. This is much better. This is much better. Good step. Very Patrick nice. Miller. Back to Erdman. Kiernan. Yeah. You could see what he was doing, trying to get the ball through to Joel. Just missed hit it with the outside of his foot. Well, they had good numbers back in that case. Nothing there. Absolutely nothing there. No, he won the ball. Hey, he won the ball. The kid jumped into him. I mean, he, and then jumped back. Eh, nothing there. Blake didn't even take a step towards him. You know, after he made contact with the ball, there's nothing there. Touch back. Jonathan's got it, and he's got some time. This I, I like this. Here with the ball. Heads up. To Muck. Oh, boy. That may be. We, That'll be a card. Yeah, we got a yeah. booking. And that's, I think that's Garrett's third card in two games. He got called for the PK. I think he got called for another one. Now, I don't know if they rescinded that card, but he got called for another one, which was unfortunate, which was not No, and that really wasn't his issue. Now he's got this one here, so um, 
he is he's starting to build a, a collection. Well, hey, we don't have accumulation issues here uh, like you would in um, you know FIFA play or something like that. So so long as he doesn't get two in the same game, I'm Killing fine. Killing my fantasy team. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, everybody who's got Garrett Blake is getting some demerits. Uh, you know, I expected all those assists from Blake this year, you know, with the throw -ins. He's just killing my fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> nice job from Kevin to go up and win that one cleanly. They're going to try to play it back in. Ooh, tried to play a little touchback 1-2 ball here, but Joe, very alert, off his line, no problem. And I like yeah. the quick counter here. Can Pizone yeah, keep it in? Uh, he will. Good, good distribution. Joel Shields well. Yep. Looking to play through to the middle. He will get it there. Kiernan touches wide. Here comes West coming forward. And you know, it's uh and this is being critical. You know, you're putting the pass in and making it a 50-50 ball. You know, it's gotta be a better better decision as far as where that ball is going and then, you know, where do I put it? On the left side of the player, the right side of the player type of thing. You you don't want to put the recipient, the intended recipient, into a 50-50 ball. And uh Good play there by Sean Gallagher of Bethel Park. You know, and Sean's one of the, Sean's a senior, number ten. Okay, probably their best player, and um, just neutralized tonight. You know, you really haven't heard much from him at all uh, as far as being creative and developing things. So I expect more from him. Uh, Second half, we got about 55 seconds left. Patrick Miller makes a great pass to the guy we're talking about. <laughs> But uh, it's cleaned up. Not out, though, unfortunately. They're nope. going to try to play nope. back in trouble. here. Just having trouble getting rid of the ball. Joe Connell will eat this thing up. About 35 seconds left, and we'll just slow things down and ease it down and uh, hopefully get this ball out of our half, and we won't see it again in our half until the second half. Kiernan with the ball. To Miller, he'll go back. Yeah, 14 seconds left. And this should pretty much end the half right here. Boy, he spilled it there. He tried to make it exciting. Yeah. Five, four, three, so a good half here for the Panthers. I mean, they come out of the half basically being up uh, one nothing. okay? Uh, control the game, all right? Uh, a few too many unforced errors from time to time. But again, it's early in the season. This is only our fourth game. Only our fourth game, so there are things that we'll need to tighten up as we go through the course of the season. But uh, one nothing against a, uh, the undefeated 6-0 Hawks from Bethel Park, and we'll sign off, and we'll see you at the beginning of the second half. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The second half here, 40 minutes left to play in this contest between the Upper St. Clair Panthers and the Hawks of Bethel Park. Gavin, one nothing Upper St. Clair, and um, probably the right score at this point in time, probably the right result. Yeah, you know, soccer's one of those games where sometimes the, the result doesn't match the way the game is being played. Probably the highest percentage in any sport where the score doesn't always reflect how the game has gone. But I do think it is a reflection. Upper St. Clair was the stronger side. They did possess the ball and, and, and had territorial advantage for much of the half, uh, and, and I thought they were the better side. Uh, mostly good things. The only issue, as we've talked about, was some, some uh, disorganization, some sloppiness in the back. If they can get that... Uh, ironed out. I expect to see, you know, at least another goal, uh, you know, for for the team in white and a clean sheet. Probably more importantly. Yep. No. Couldn't couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. So we'll set the lineup. John Erdman um, in the back. West Burdett, Hayden Barnhart. Uh, looks like that is Sam Russell. Sam I Russell think. out there getting maybe his first uh, first minutes of the year playing in the out uh, outside back. Ooh, bad giveaway by uh, Doug Hateman there. But uh, Doug Hateman and uh, Troy Kiernan in the holding mid. Robbie uh, Mertz playing the attacking mid. Patrick Miller out on the left. Joel Hart up top and uh, Ethan Darst dice it up right. And, uh, you know, less than a minute, 30 seconds in. Bethel Park has a uh, free kick here. You know, we talked about those soft giveaways. And, you know, we've got one right there. And uh, leads to a uh, free kick here for the, uh, for the Hawks. And it's early. Those are things that get tightened up. You know, For sure. Are, through the course of the season, those are things that get tightened up by the boys. You know, the funny thing about it is the worst, you know, some of the worst thing you can do is just turn around and boot it 
clear it out to get it to the other team because you're just basically turning the ball over and letting them come and attack you. But it's better than giving the ball away in your own, you know, in your own half. And so yeah. it, it's it's a fine line. Sometimes if you're feeling trouble, booting it away is is the preferable outcome there. Yeah, and unfortunately, you know, forwards can make mistakes all day long, but if they score, everybody loves them. When you're in the back, you make one mistake, you could be the goat for weeks. Absolutely. <laughs> There's a lot of pressure on the kids that are pl that are playing in the back. A lot of pressure. That's good idea by uh, Hateman. Good call by Patrick Miller. They both recognized it just a little uh, short on the execution. Russell touches up. This is Joel Hart with his back. This is a nice, nice little ball. ball. Top, Ethan Dicer, and he will get there. Let's see what he can do here. Try to beat this player 1v1. Yes, he does. Great get turn. Your head up. What do you have? He had Robbie Mertz, but he oh, couldn't quite get it. going to hammer this ball. It's still loose. Oh, Sammy, 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 your eyes had to be as large as donuts to tee that one up. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a shame he's only that been out the there for about a minute or two. the back stream. <laughs> Have that ball laid up like that. Oh, he's in 40 seconds and he gets that. Beautiful little ball, though, there from uh, Joel Hart. He held it up and then sort of switched fields with it and got it to stay. That was beautiful. Robbie applying pressure there. I don't want to throw in here for the, uh, for the Panthers. I think West Burdett will come up and uh, go back to where he was. Yeah, Ethan went quick. Yeah, and that's the kind of situation, you know, I people that have heard, watch a broadcast hear me say a lot you know in those situations we've got guys that can throw the ball into the box let's do it yeah take I your mean, time let's do it thrown by sam russell doug hateman troy kiernan use oh nice nice pull back v by troy kiernan to maintain possession of the ball yeah that's Earth. clever high level stuff yep west burdett with the throw in here Trying to get that ball over type to Ethan Dysert. Well done. Dice is going to control it, see if he can beat the player. Nice job by the defender. And that's absolutely fine right there. And uh, are they going to bring up Wes? No. Jonathan got past the first guy, almost got past the second guy, but Rob comes back and touches back to Wes. This is Robbie Mertz. And. Uh, Oh, I thought uh, the Bethel player had touched it, but I guess he had not. Stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's what you find yourselves at times like that when you're receiving the ball, we call it closed position, the, the uh, touch line, you know, the sideline, if you will, becomes another defender. You know, oh, Robbie just found himself in a tough in a tough position there. So the uh, Bethel Park player sort of finishing, <laughs> finishing the play against West, going to draw a uh, free kick here for the Panthers just yep. across midfield. Wes looks like he's pushing him forward here. Uh, I don't know how, how direct he's going to go, but we know Wes can, can put it with distance if he wants to. Now he's going to play down the line, and he, 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 he right after he hit it, you can tell he was uh, disgusted with himself. No idea. But he knew it. He did, and he apologized yeah, immediately. He just, he just... Clever little play. Cheeky stuff from Jonathan there. Ah, yep. it's a uh, shame. It's an unforced, unforced error there. Wes will play this ball back to uh, Conlon. Good, solid Joe contact, the yeah. Ball in. Yeah, and you can hear, uh, hear the backs telling the midfielders to uh, clean up the passes in the midfield, and uh, he's absolutely right. That's the good thing when, you, when you've had guys who've won championships, who've been here, they're seniors, they're leaders, they know what they have to do. They, they don't need coaches telling them, you know, a lot of the times. They know the obvious stuff. They know how to play. And so that's nice to hear, actually. That's very encouraging. So coming up on about 34 minutes left here in the second half. This is great effort from Joel Hart. Boy, he won that ball and almost turned it. Mike Guerrero with the ball at his feet. Sam Russell comes back and cleans that up. It'll be a uh, hawk throwing on the far side. Hayden's almost like he's shadowing Guerrero, and he's done a really good job. Ball over top, Joe Collin. T.J. Gallagher trying to get to that ball, and Joe does a nice job coming out off his line quickly to collect it. 34 minutes left here in the second half. Good distribution out to Ethan Dysert. 
Inside out. Ooh, oh, wow. And that should be a foul. Yeah. That's a textbook one. The one thing Easy I call. The one thing I probably like most about Joe Conlon is how decisive he is in terms of when he decides to go off his line or he decides to come out and punch a ball. He does it. He doesn't hesitate and second guess himself. He just goes and does it. And I think that's, you know, it's the right approach. Your first instinct is usually the correct one. Yeah, he's been making some between last year and beginning of this year, particularly at the Catamac game. Um, kid's been making some good decisions. I mean, just solid as can be. Nice you know, little he's square. Not your, he's not your prototypical 6-4 uh, goalkeeper back there. Okay, rangy, but... Um, Arguably one of the better keepers in the in the whoopee hole this year, and he's solid and just mentally knows exactly what to do. Boy, this th that was some good little possession uh, by Upper St. Clair there. Jonathan Erdman was sort of the trigger of it, and he he cut in, beat a guy, and ripped one with his left foot that hit a Bethel defender in the face. But here come the Panthers back on the counter. They are yep. possessing nicely here. This is some of actually the, the best uh, sustained possession yeah. and good decision-making we've had tonight. Jonathan, again, who's been very strong tonight. Yeah, you shield? Yeah, and John will have those tendencies. He, he does come forward. I mean, he is not afraid to come forward, does a nice job with that. Um, and again, that's one of the advantages of playing four in the back you can get your outside backs up into the uh, attack yeah i'm a big proponent of the flat back four to be perfectly honest especially if you have some guys who can be dynamic up that wing tj gallagher with the ball into the corner wes is just going to see that ball out and it's going to be a foul probably that's going to come out for the panthers with about uh, just under 32 minutes left here in the second half he actually fouled him twice for good measure and is getting a little bit of a warning Wes is a big body, uh, able to shield those um, offensive players. Yeah, absolutely. Long clearance out. Ether Dice, it's up for the ball. You know, the other. Well done by the defense. Oh, wow. Cheeky, he pulled it back. Cheeky stuff by Erdman, and he got held. He got held. He had him beat. He's done. A, he made a couple plays this I half where he's pulling the ball back. He's flipping it up. You're surprised how well he can handle the ball at times. Okay, plain and simple. All right. He really does a nice job in handling the ball. Oh, Robbie tried to toe poke it just by him. Couldn't quite slip it by. Ball to Guerrero outside. Russell will take inside. Hayden will take the player outside. Good stick by Barnhart. Very nice, dangerous play. Yep. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's for that St. Clair's ball. I mean, Guerrero, he got stuck, fell over the ball, and with indignation looks at the ref and says, oh, me? Hayden's had a strong night. Just solid. Yeah, just solid. That's all we're looking for back there. Now, he's, he's been the one with all of the first one-on-one -on -one challenges against, you know, against their striker. And, yeah, he's got some support. He's got some help, but it doesn't matter. He hadn't needed it. Sam Russell up on the ball, out to Patrick Miller, back to Doug Hateman. It's going to go over top to Joel Hart. See if he can keep this ball in. and it Harmlessly rolls out of bounds here for a uh, Bethel Park throw in on the far side, deep in their territory. Yeah, don't let that fool you. That was a nice little bit of possession, even though they couldn't keep the ball, and I like the one-two and then the long ball down the wing. Now he Hart touches back. Doug touches middle here. And uh, tough ball. Yeah, yeah I mean, Troy couldn't quite win it. That's one of those balls that it becomes a 50-50 ball that doesn't doesn't need to be. I will say Bethel's done a nice job of pressure in our midfield. They're not make they're not letting things be easy in terms of the, the ability for Upper St. Clair to maintain possession. So you got to give them credit for that. Nice step from Jonathan. Yep. Gallagher on the ball, puts it back. Ooh, Joel just, just off on that. Beautiful nice little one-two. Yep, there's a nice flick by the park player. Mike Guerrero trying to get through, and uh, Sam Russell uh, shielding him off the ball extremely well. Colin with the ball in his hands, less than 30 minutes left. 
Under 29 even here in the second half. Still 1-0 Upper St. Clair against Bethel Park. You know, and for a team that scored, has scored 26 goals in their first six, six games, not a lot of threats, if any. No, they haven't not looked at... Not a lot of threats, if any. You know, sometimes it's you're just, you know, you're not on the same page, whatever. They've just not even looked dangerous at no. all. No, not at all. Again, Troy's uh, nice pull back. Oh, that's beautiful. Move. Just yep. beautiful. Dicer got to get on his horse a little bit here and go at him. Go at him, Ethan. Beautiful Take square ball. Miller's offsides. That was easy. Yep. You could see the uh, Bethel Park defender step up. I think Patrick probably got zeroed in on the ball and just didn't see the uh, defender move up. Yeah, I mean, it was either that or he thought Troy was going to fire it and he wanted to be there for a rebound. I can't really tell, but uh, it was sort of just unfortunate timing. Guerrero doing a nice job getting to the ball. Saves it, puts it over top. Urban overruns it a little bit. There's a ball into the box. Headed out easily by uh, Barnhart, and uh, Urban clears the ball. Well done. Probably Bethel's one of their better chances all night. I absolutely agree. That was they had the ball deep, you know, on somebody's foot. Again, over top to Guerrero. It's that and same matchup, and Hayden's there again. Yep, that's going to go out as a uh, as a throw, or excuse me, as a corner kick for the uh, for the Hawks. Just when we say they haven't been dangerous all night, they get uh, you know a little bit of a flurry the here. Intended jinx. Always the happens. Intended jinx, you know. Always happens. Going to have to jinx him back somehow here. Boy, they are just really dangerous right now. <laughs> Deep ball. Very nice. A pack of Panthers there led by Troy Kiernan. That ball will go out for a Hawk throw in. Down to Sean Gallagher. Looking for some support. Oh, trying to get the turn. Looking for some help. Finally lays the ball back. Sam with a little push in the back there, but nothing, uh, no foul. Oh, there's a nice ball in. Great Russell, read. Yeah, Russell covers. Good coverage by uh, Sam Russell there. No it, foul here, Jonathan. Just keep him out there. Play him negative. Get him to play negative. Cross into the box. Oh, boy. And that's cleared. So the Panthers making things interesting here over the last minute and a half. Yeah, they may want to sub, actually, at this point. They may want to get some fresh legs in there. They were doing really, really well, but uh, you know, at some point you sort of get stagnant. It's a good ball by Sam. This came off Robbie's foot a little too much. Kevin mucks up, looking to get in again. Troy touches wide. He thought uh, Sam Russell was out square, but was not. Hateman can't quite get there. Foul, it's going to be a play on. Hawks touch wide. Danger on the back post. Bernhardt, Hayden Barnard is the, there once again to clear yeah, it out I mean, of danger. Hayden's doing but, a great job covering it, but um, you know, Bethel has had the run of play here over the past few minutes, and for whatever reason, they've got a little bit more intensity. Passes are finding their teammates a little bit more than they were. And another uh, quarter kick here for the Hawks. Yeah, Panthers got to be careful. They got to reestablish what they had going for the first you know, 10 minutes. Box. Ooh, that was a really nice corner. Oh, boy, not out. Guerrero with the ball at his feet. Barnhart trying to clear up to Robbie Mertz. Nice ball by Hayden. And just harmlessly played outside. Yeah, Robbie missed hit that. He was, you could tell he was distraught the minute it hit off his foot. But out of bounds, a little bit of a break for the Panthers, and we are going to see Kevin Muck come back into the game here. He's with Dougie Hayden. Yeah, maybe, uh, you know, the thinking behind here could be they're losing some of those battles in the midfield now at this point and, and not being able to possess the ball because of that. Come on and, uh, and bring Kevin to try to win some balls. That's a nice little touch, one, two there. Going wide, trying to find Ethan Dysert. Dysert checks back. He's going to try to turn it. Here's Muck. 
Miller, nice little stuff here. This is Dysart. Has it to Muck. Oh, I thought he was going to square it. He was. He was going to try to square it to Troy and just lost it. Uh-oh, Jonathan jumping in hard. Yep. Guerrero will hold this ball up and wait for help. Finds Sean Gallagher. Goes out to the flank. Erdman recovers. He's going to win that ball handily. Miller's got a little yeah, bit of time here. Some help. Looking for some help. Just go negative. There you go. There you go. Swing it one more quickly. Yep. Mark's got some space here. Touches wide now. Switching fields completely to Sam Russell. Russell touches middle. Troy Kiernan's got a little bit of time here. Touches Miller. I ah, couldn't quite run onto that. Uh-oh, Panthers dispossessed again. West comes on, wins it clean. Not sure exactly who he's yelling at, who coach is yelling at there. But he's Whoa. upset with somebody. This will be dangerous. Take our time here, take advantage of our uh, height and our superiority in the air. This is going to be interesting to see what sort of tactical approach they take here. There's a lot you can do from here. And, and it, absolutely. It, it, it's yeah, absolutely. obviously very dangerous. Now Wes is taking a different angle. Oh, he's going to try to cut it? Ah, they sort of went direct. Yeah, it went right at the keeper. It was as if he thought he, the keeper was cheating out too far to play the cross, and he tried to beat him back near post. Ambitious. Really ambitious. Ambitious, that's all. He struck it well, too. He yeah, just he was a good ball, but... Um, Again, I kind of would like to see that ball swung in uh, to our uh, to our aerial advantage. Yeah, I agree with you. Okay, Ethan Dysert with a welcoming shoulder. Yeah, I think that comes back from whatever discussion they were having about a minute prior when Ethan won the call. Just exchanging phone numbers. Yeah, for sure. Big party in Bethel Park tonight. Hey, when, whenever St. Clair and Bethel Park get together, you don't <laughs> you expect the exchange of pleasantries. <laughs> Good job from Sam. No, pro or no, that's that was Hayden again. When they gave the Panthers the throw, I didn't see that at all, but it's okay by me. Kuzny's going to get a chance to come in, see what he can do. Uh oh. 21 minutes left. This is not a good giveaway. There's a deflection. Nice job, Hayden Barnhart. Hayden Barnhart again. Yeah, and again, not really, not a heck of a lot of shooting lane opportunity for for the Hawks there. No, nah, the, the back four has done a really good job tonight, especially considering there's been a lot of turnovers in the midfield. That was Troy. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's just it's been too frequently, just like that. Yeah, and those, again, we, gotta, we just got to tighten up those giveaways. There's just way too many giveaways. Now, you know, one of the things you have to think about, say, why are we giving up the ball so often? One of the things you may think, may not think about, we play a possession game. For sure. So we're going to pass the ball probably eight, nine, ten times more wow. than, our, than our opponent. Boy, Jonathan Urban got his toe on that and may have saved a goal. So the possibility for those mistakes are going to be much greater with a team like ours based on the style we play as opposed to somebody else that plays more of a direct game. So yeah, I think you're right. And then Joe just gobbled this up. Good distribution. Yep, there we go. So we're looking for Troy get his head up, put a nice ball out to Easton Dicer. Really nice ball. Be a first time ball in a Joel. A little too slow. Oh, there this has got is. a man Patrick running. Miller. Thank you very much. Oh. And it is goes off. So. I thought Ethan would hit that first ball to Joel as he was running on because Joel was going to very easily get by, get behind the defense there. He did, and he slotted it back. Kind of a miss hit, I think, with Patrick Miller off his foot. Fell nicely to Joel nonetheless. And um, unfortunately, you know, found himself um, with a good shot. I mean, he was in a good spot. was looking for the upper corner, just didn't put it in, okay? He had it targeted for the exact absolutely, right place. Yeah, absolutely, and, um, you know, 
I'll take Joel in that position any day. Any day. He's going to finish more of those than he misses. Okay, I'll take him any day in that spot. Absolutely. He is the right guy, and he did not strike it poorly. He just uh, he went for a, a strong strike in the upper left-hand corner and just uh, put it wide. So let's see if the Panthers can uh, regain a little momentum based upon that attack. It was yeah, a really strong no attack. Question. About 18 minutes left in the game here. One thing that's going to be interesting to watch is, and, and this is sort of part of the midfield pressure, Bethel's pushed a lot more numbers, not necessarily up front per se, but into the midfield uh, and, and pushing forward. So they're pressuring us harder, but some of the balls that you know we don't typically play as much, some of the longer, more direct balls may work, and, and Ethan's been really the conduit for that. Yeah, yeah, I think he's got the, he's got the speed, Joel's got the speed, okay, and the ability to handle the ball at pace. Um, you know, let's try it. Connor, oh, oh Connor Kuzni gets through. Hey, nice aggressive play by Connor, and it, he wins us a free kick. About 30 yards out, and uh, that's purely because of his aggressive play. Wasn't being lazy. He was getting after the ball, and uh, away he went, and he got it. And that's what you want your subs to do. That's the second or third sub when they've hungry. come in. Yeah, absolutely. Hungry. I mean, come on. Oh. You know, now we got to get back and recover. I don't know if, if the goalie was screened on that play because he started heading to the far post and then Looks stopped. Like he struggled a little bit with that one. <laughs> I, thought, I thought the same thing. I wasn't sure where Quinton, what was going on there. I think ball, he probably had a screen. He may, uh, Yeah, he may have just got screened out a little bit. Looks like uh, Spencer Davis is ready to come in for his first action of the night. Connor Mokuzny with the ball on the far side. Taking his space. Oh, and the ball. Yeah, he was off. Call him off sides. Yeah, yeah, Joel was off sides there. Connor's doing a nice job in his first action here, showing a little bit, showing a little bit of something uh, up front, a little aggression, a little spark. That's especially with your guys up front. Boys that want to play, you know, it's just boys that want to play. They can finally get a chance. Uh oh. I got absolutely no concerns on this because Hayden. Ho oh. That should be a card. That was a little. Little cheeky on, uh, little cheeky on Mike's part. Boy, they didn't get anything. Yeah, a little cheeky on Mike's part. A little bit of frustration. Well, yeah. Hayden's been. I mean, he's basically been wearing a Hayden suit all night. I mean, Hayden has been absolutely all over yeah. him. So uh, Joel Hart comes out. Spencer Davis is in. I think they're pushing Kevin Muck up top. About 16 and a half left in the game. Or uh, who is that? Shane Sibley. Yeah, absolutely. Like yeah, yeah, that makes more sense to me. Makes more sense to me. They put Shane Sibley up top. Mike Guerrero with the ball. Dougie's just going to hold him up. Ball comes in. Nice. Off of Sammy's foot, and we're clearing the ball. And that's going to be a goal kick coming out for the Panthers. So about a little under 16 minutes left in the game. Still one nothing, and... Uh, a little bit better by Bethel. Yeah, I yeah, think a so. Bit better by the Hawks this half. Okay, a little bit better. Yeah, last ten minutes of the game, they've created some scoring opportunities, some corner kicks, and some and some sustained possession. And that's yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's really what they were lacking in the first yep. half. You know, the, anything they got was off giveaways and such. Yep, absolutely. Davis with a nice touch back. Yeah, now Hayden's to going all the way back. Get that ball, and we control it, and away we go again. So, types of things that we're looking for. Shielding off with Sean Gallagher. A lot of battling. Yep. Miller and Davis on him. Uh-oh. He touched it by great recovery yep. from Hayden again. Good job by Colin. Sean Gallagher finally getting himself through. Yeah, you're right. I mean, as their most dynamic guy, uh, they're, they're not quiet. finding him enough. Yeah, he's been quiet. You know, they just haven't found him enough. He's been quiet. Well, typically, he, I mean, you know, if you got a number 10, he's the guy you're looking for, too. They're not really, you know, they're not looking for him to be the trigger all the time. And that's... No, not at all. He, he, prob that's probably problematic, I'm guessing, if you're the Bethel staff. Yep. Oh, boy. Off Erdman's head. And the ball goes out. Yeah, the Panthers just have lost momentum here and have not uh, been able to, to whittle it back here. That, I think it's all. I thought, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's off his leg. And you expect, I mean, you, you expect the um, the Hawks to come out here hard, okay? Um, you know, to try to get a goal here in the last, uh, in the closing moments of the game here, last uh, 15, 20 minutes. Well, this is a good soccer team. Don't get me wrong. I didn't expect a one-sided game tonight. Nope. 
Nice little flick by Ethan. Can yeah, good turn by Joel. He did, and he wanted yep. deep. Joel did a nice job. He was just off the bench, so he's nice and fresh. Yep. Ethan touches back. Davis has some room. Oh, there's a nice oh, ball. Boy. Connor get the, oh, boy. What'd they call? I think they called him offside. Which guy, though? Uh, has to be Connor because nobody else was in the play. I disagree, then, I with the call. I thought the you. right outside I, back I, was behind I, him. I agree with you, but the guy... You know, the uh, AR is right there. He was in, if he's out of position, you can argue it. No, he's he was right, right there. He's right, right there, so you got to think, okay. you got to think he's done and made the right call. You're right. Dysert with the ball at his feet, the Hateman. And the Hawk nice. Gets a nice flick to Dysert. Nice flick to Dysert. Yep, and we're just going to handle the ball here for a little while. Very nice Back from Jonathan. Way yep. to be simple. Yep. Russell Miller. Yep. Miller yep. fighting for the ball. I think that's going to be throwing for the Panther. Oh, no. I guess uh, Erdman did get his foot on the ball. Yeah, he touched it a little bit. And he yep. knew he did. Wow, that's a nice long throw. Good throw in from the Panthers. Nice step. I'm telling you, Hayden, I think he's shadowing him, but he's been all over him. Yep. Good ball by uh, Davis there to lead Hateman into an open position. And good job by yeah, Spencer Davis there to yeah, be. Wonderful. And That's exactly what we're looking for. Guy got exactly his jersey tugged. Right, there he is. Davis yep. has some room here. He's got it. Ah, oh, boy, that was a yep. good idea, though. That's the through ball. Back to the Panthers, T.J. Gallagher with the ball over, and Sam Russell's going to step up and win that ball. Yeah, it's a little bit of a bad touch from Bethel there. They had more room yep. than that. Patrick Miller on the ball. He puts it out to Dysert. Great ball. Oh, Ethan's, a great ball. Ethan's having a yep. really strong half. Yep, Spencer handling the ball. We're going to maintain possession. That, well done, well done. Nice touch from Russell. And outside to Connor Mulcuzny, who steps into Russell. He's going to put him through, and he's going to keep coming. Got to give it, come up and give him a little bit of support here. Oh, uh, he, he thought he'd wanted a corner, and yeah, so did I. I so too. He's going to call it a goal kick. Well, there was now the same argument you made on the last one. There was nobody anywhere near that play, so uh, <laughs> he's, he's saying you he didn't see it. So about 11 minutes left here in the uh, in the game. Still one nothing, Upper St. Clair, and I think Upper St. Clair has kind of started to take over, or at least make it even here when uh, Bethel has really made a run recently. Good job Erdman by Jonathan Erdman checking Erdman back. That play on. Erdman gets tripped up. Clever ball Davis from Burdett. Ball he's got to get his head up. And there's a great ball in there. Joel, and he's off to the races. Hart's in. It's 1v1 with Joel Hart. Bang. And he finishes. Fantastic ball by Spencer Davis. Finds Joel Hart with the through ball. And away he goes. And it is 2-0. Upper St. Clair with 10 minutes, 43 seconds left. Well, we... We got a couple things to talk about. We've talked about the, the gradual buildup for the Panther attack, how they sort of go back to back, but that was two passes. Accurate. Two Ac passes. Accurate passing. Two, that was, Accurate passing. So basically, Jonathan Erdman hustled back and touched the ball to Burdett. So Burdett had the ball around the 15 or 20 yard line of the football field. One beautiful little through ball to Davis, one gorgeous through ball springing Joel Hart, goal. And that, you know, like we, like we talked about five minutes ago, Bethel was sort of cheating up. Yep. You, you could play a little more direct. You, you called it. And there it was, yep, and it was beautiful. It. So, and, um, you know, let's face it. Again, I like Joel Hart in that position. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, Joel I like wasn't going to miss that, twice. I like him in that position. So the Panthers got a little bit of breathing room here. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Ball into Davis in the center. Outside the Erdman coming up on a flank. Little chin ass. <laughs> and, and that's, look, as a coach, that's the kind of stuff that kills you. You just, you just, you don't want to see that. I mean, you just don't want to see Jonathan that. Jonathan wanted back nicely, yeah. though. 
Okay, so Hearts Offsides, uh, AR is saying, and, and Erdman saying, what, what, what? Okay, as a coach, it's like you're coaching basketball. It's the behind the back, the behind the back pass. When it works, yeah, it looks you keep great. your mouth shut. Yeah, but, <laughs> but you know darn well when it doesn't, you are all over the player. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually looked at Coach Swobel after he did it, and he just sort of put his head down. Yep. Jonathan's one of the last guys I'm, I want to fault. Uh, because one, he's been really good tonight, and two, he's been super aggressive, and I love the I love how aggressive he's been up the flank. Uh, and I don't want and I don't, I'm sure the coaching staff doesn't want to curb his aggression. It's nothing to do with that. No, it isn't. It's just it, at that point. Yeah, exactly. Time, That's not the right play. In front of the bench, is not going to grant you a lot of accolades. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to do that. Do it on the far side of yeah, the so you can't, Yeah, so you can't get screamed at. <laughs> you, I love it. But you're not under the spotlight. <laughs> it's always a good time here up on the roof on Saturday night calling a game. <laughs> eight, eight and a half minutes left in the game. Upper Look at Saint, Hayden. Upper St. Clair, two. Bethel Park, zero. And you got to think the... Hawks are going to throw everything they can at the Panthers here with eight and a half minutes left. In. I'm telling you, Guerrero's going to be seeing Aiden Barnard's shadow in his sleep this well, evening. Well, he sees him at practice a lot during the oh, club season. Oh, is that <laughs> right? They're on, they're on different teams. Now, uh, Michael's a player over at Century on uh, next year's U-17 team, Hayden on the U-16 team. So uh, they, they scrimmage against each other. Oh, that's off the football goal post. Yep. That's a goal kick. They uh, scrimmage goal, goal against kick. each other a lot, train with each other and whatnot. So they, they see each other a lot through the uh, through the course of the cup season. I, I just I think Aiden has been absolutely superlative tonight and been absolutely all over him. He's just flat out solid. Okay. He's exactly what you want in the back. He doesn't get rattled. He doesn't play with the ball too much. Okay. He does exactly what you're looking for. Miller wins another ball very nicely. Little one two here. This yep. is Miller again. Yep. Got to get outside. Oh, clever. Patrick, just get it outside. I couldn't quite get it there. Yeah, yeah he was. Got to give him a little bit more help. Give him support. Give the players support. Give the players with the ball support. Here's Davis. Yeah, well done. Miller. And he's going to put that wide. There's a great ball. Oh. Ooh. I tell you what, this combination in the middle doing a nice job. Doing a real nice job. Finding those forwards, getting them released. That's about the third or fourth yep, potential through ball. For it. And you can see different players, different mentality. Oh, sure. Different times of the game also. You know, different times of the game. Yeah, get them when they're a little worn down. This is the time to take some of these chances. Yep. So the boys are doing a nice job with it. Yeah, Miller's had two balls in a row here that uh, have resulted in offside, so you didn't really get to see what might have resulted out of them, but they've been, you know, really nice balls. So. Yep, absolutely. Ball over top. Jonathan with a little flick. Dicer. Nice stuff, Davis. Ethan. Very nice. Well there we done, go. Well done, well done. And they could come forward. Let's go forward, boys. Oh, there's a nice Tur ball out to Milkuzny. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah, they're just, I tell you what, these guys are seeing it. They are seeing it right now. They really are. It's good to see. It's good to see. And Connor. Just leave it, just leave it, Connor. Just leave it. Just leave the ball and let Wes take the throw in, please. Yeah, Thank there it you, is. Connor. We got six minutes left. Why are we rushing? No, nah, take your time. Take your time. Let's get the big throw. Know where you are in a game. See if we can get a third one in. Not to mention it's just a better opportunity. Oh, nice now play from the goalie. Yeah. How did he get through that wall of people? Basketball player. I guess. Yeah, no, basketball I, I, yeah maybe he can stick to soccer. He's got good hands. I know you wanted that. That's fine by me, That's too. Oh, good stick by Miller. Good stick by Miller into Davis. To Milkuzny. Miller. This is how you ice a game, you know? Possess. Wow. Well, look Joe at this. Through. Yeah, one that little, one little, out. a bit of an errant touch, but boy, you're seeing some great combinations yeah. right now. Kids are playing well. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Speed of plays picked up. Combinations are very good, and the accuracy has been fantastic. Okay, it's really been good later on. Now you've also got a Bethel Park team that's trying to push up and whatnot, so it. Gives you those gaps, but hey, take the, advantage of them, and the boys are doing a great job right that, now. Doing that, and they haven't subbed a whole lot. And at some point. This is, starting, this is their starting team. Yeah. Okay, these are basically a lot of our, uh, you know, substitutes, if you will, second players, okay, but um, playing against their starting team and just doing just doing a great job. Well, that's that's where depth, that, that's where depth can 
being a huge advantage. At yep. the end of a game, we got some kids, you know, who are, are, are very talented kids who have super fresh legs. That's a that's a great luxury. And that's, Absolutely. You know, you, when you have a very talented team, you, you can you There's have a that. A little giveaway there by uh, by Connor. And again, these are things we just got to we just got to tighten this stuff up. You know, you got to tighten this stuff up. That ball's going to go out for a uh, St. Clair throw-in. Only four and a half minutes left in the uh, in the game. Jonathan Erdman taking his time. Big throw in by Wes. Oh, heads up. Yep, right till. Oh, boy. And there, we're going to clear that out. So we can't. We, four minutes left. Got to keep the tempo up. Oh, four this minutes is, left. Oh, wow. Right around to Tyson's himself. Got some wheels. Oh, there we go, Joel. That's a nice strike. Yeah, nice strike. Well, good work by Dysart. Good save by. Uh, Keebler in the goal. You know, it's funny, not much that Ethan has done this half has resulted in a goal or anything like that, but he's done such good work and been so dangerous down the right side. Well, and you, can, you, can, you can see it. I mean, you can see it, okay? He's got, he hasn't got the rewards, but you can see the ability, okay? And you know the rewards are, are on their way. Here's a ball into the box. Okay, served by Bethel. Ball cleared out. Looks like uh, Tony Pizzone, about three minutes left, getting ready to come in. Dicer with the ball. Ah, uh, good Ooh, idea, thought, though. Yeah. yeah, not bad. And that ball, well, that's that still a in. nice ball to Gallagher. Not sure if he'll get there. And nah. he does. Yeah, not, almost, almost. Almost. Tony Bazone coming in for Connor Mulcuzny. Connor had a nice run. I really yeah, like the Connor way. Connor had a nice run. Okay, so uh, he took advantage of the uh, of the time that he was given. He had a nice run here. Usually we half. have a guy up front, you know, no matter how many minutes they may play, who who's like that, who's just a real effort-laden guy. You know, your Will Sullivans of the world. And those guys are valuable, very valuable. You know, Brett Fackenthal on the state championship team, for example. Sammy gets caught a little bit here. We're going to have to recover and help. Oh, Sam, great job, Sam. Way to be tough, Sammy. Way to be tough. Way to be tough. Good job, Spence. Make him go negative. Well done. Ah, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. Yeah, Sam, you, know, you love when a kid you know, get, turns it over, whatever, and gets back and makes the play himself. And that's, you don't give up. No. You don't give up, and, you're, and your buddy's coming to help. <laughs> well, that, if you, sprint, if you can just sprint back and delay him a bit, there you'll get numbers behind the ball. It's, it's right. those turnovers where... You can't. You don't have time Those to get numbers behind the ball. Those in the back that we talked about earlier. Well, that's that's when, <laughs> when you don't have time. around in the back when we get when we get dispossessed, you know. That's when you don't have time right. to, you know, and that's that's how really Spencer good teams can one. give up goals. Spencer with the ball, over to Hateman, outside to Erdman. Good that's stuff. nice. Yeah, yeah, very nice. Oh, you know how to you know how to work out of trouble now. Or to West, excuse me. Oh, that's a little. That's a beautiful little ball yep. from West. Yep. Spencer's getting nice dragged. Ball nice ball. Miller. Ooh, another nice There's ball. Dysert. ball oh, Almost an own goal. <laughs> yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Coming up on about a minute left in the game. You've seen that combination again. That's that Burdett miller davis combination right now in the middle, working some things, finding some holes. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, talk about the nice thing is, you know, Bethel's got their pretty much their starters in here, and we've got a ton of guys that are coming in and making things happen, okay? And it's good to see a lot of guys take advantage of the limited opportunity for you sure. know, that they get. I mean, no, no two ways about it, okay? Dicer looks dangerous. He really I mean, he does. He really looks dangerous, okay? Nice little Colin, through ball. Uh, Colin's going to eat that up. Yep. Now we Colin's got 30 seconds left here in uh, the second half of the Panthers Bethel Park soccer match, and it looks like the Panthers are going to run their record to 4 and 0. A beautiful start for uh, the defending Whitfield champs. Yeah, a great start for them, and beating a uh, Bethel Park team that came in here 6 and 0, uh, and you know really felt that they could. Ooh. Frankly, it should have been a foul the other direction, but that's going to be a yellow card on Jonathan. They're going to stop the clock here and. Yeah, just not not necessary. Okay, not necessary. And uh, I know TJ likes to uh, TJ likes to talk it up. Okay, and uh, I know Erdman's not going to back down from anybody. 
Boys, it's 2 nothing. Let it go. 2 nothing. Let it go. Come back, play defense. Go home, take a shower, go out and enjoy yourself. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's a Saturday night. Yeah, you just won a big exactly. game. Oh, boy, was that a two-hand totally shove. I'm glad this game's right, ending before Gavin. it gets ugly. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Just end it, shake hands, and be on your way. But Upper St. Clair running their record, what's it, 4-0? Beautiful. Okay, they defeat a uh, undefeated Bethel Park team that came into the game 6-0. Uh, uh, so a lot of good play from a lot of good guys. So who do we got next week? Moon Thursday, I know, or Moon Tuesday? I'll I'm be honest with you. I have no idea. I don't either. It doesn't matter. Check the schedule. It doesn't matter. The team is on a roll. And uh, good play tonight. It's a gorgeous evening. Everybody enjoy their Saturday night. And uh, as Rob Mertz always asked me to do, say good night, Gracie. Good night, Gracie.